theyeshiva.net. It's a very good question. He's saying if it's called Olamus, how is it ain't safe? By definition, it's a contradiction. Olamus ain't safe, the world's of infinity. Or to put it differently, the word Olam comes from the word Helam, which means concealment. So I'll tell you, so I asked this question many years ago from Rabbi Yael Khan. So he says, I'll tell you his answer. He'll do with it what you want. He said, pre Tzimtzum, the question was, if it's post Tzimtzum, so it's, it's an Olam, it's a world, what's Pshat Olam is Ha'ain Saf, a world of infinity. If it's a world, it's already some type of uh, consciousness, a structure, some, uh, some concealment. Some kind of form of space and time. Perhaps. Spiritual space and time. So he said, the reason in language in Eitz Chaim is that pre Tzimtzum, Mokim, that's his expression. Mokim there was no space for the worlds. What does it mean there was no space? As we said last, uh, a few Kishurim ago, it doesn't mean there was no physical space. That too. If I'm sitting in this chair, you can't occupy this chair because it's already taken. The Ain Saif already took up everything conceptually and physically. But it means much more than that. There was no conceptual space. Like if somebody in yeshiva says a svara, says an idea, right? And somebody says in Yiddish, azas svara hot kein art nisht. This idea has no place. This this idea has no place. What does it mean has no place? There's no chair for it. In the, there's no chair, there's no stender for it. Has no place means it doesn't exist. It's It's foolish. It's an impossibility. It has no place in the universe. <laughs> in the universe of logic, the universe of stupidity, it has a place. But in the universe of logic, there's no, there's no place for it because it's not a possibility. It's, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's not what it means. It doesn't make sense, right? It's folly, etc. So Narizal says, He doesn't only mean, in reality, there was no place. You know, God is, what is Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is everywhere. So there's no space. <laughs> where, where do I come in if Hashem is everywhere? So there had to be a tzimtzum. He had to, so to speak, you know, leave the room so I could come in. That's more like in terms of, you know, like in reality, there's no space because he's here. But that's already a post tzimtzum metaphor. <laughs> it's like we're competing, you know. Uh, he's here, I'm here, you, you're here, I'm here. Who's sitting on the chair? It's already, we're using a language that really doesn't have so Lahaya Makim really is much more subtle. It means pre symptom if you would talk about the world, nobody would understand what you're talking about. <laughs> it would be like uh, it, it, the, the vocabulary creates reality. There was no vocabulary for it because the the concept could not be understood. There was no vocabulary for space and for space, time. It's not like it's not like God is here, so you're not here. No, that's that's already much, much <laughs> that's already much that's already in a much lower paradigm. You know, the, the vocabulary was not here. It's, 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 uh, huh? Yes, what, what, what didn't exist? The concept. Before the existence is the concept of existence. In other words, you wouldn't even relate to anything outside of Ensef. What's a little metaphor for that? If somebody comes into the yeshiva and doesn't say a wrong idea, rather he says, I came up with a brilliant uh, revelation last night, and that is, that nine plus nine equals pink, right? Or inc- equals a chair. Nine plus nine equals coffee. You're not arguing. No, no, it's not what, it's not, it's not what Rashi means. <laughs> it's not what the Gemara means. Nine plus nine doesn't equal pink. You know, you're going you're gonna to ask other questions, what this person needs. Why? It's not in the realm of logic. If you tell me nine plus nine equals 17, Okay, I'll tell you, you made a mistake. Let me do the calculations with you, right? <laughs> if you tell me 100 times 100, or even more co- more complicated mathematical equations, sometimes very... Fine, I made a mistake. You identify the logic and you identify the flaw. 9 plus 9... <laughs> very good. 9 plus 9 equals equals pink. Okay. So he says like this. pre symptom. To speak about the Olamas is, is 9 plus 9 equals pink. post symptom in the higher realities, to talk about the Olamas is, is 9 plus 9 equals 17. 
You understand? The concept, the vocabulary is there. That's what it means, an empty space was created. There's a new vocabulary. Lepoil, there's eight soif. <laughs> in, Asiya, in our world, 9 plus 9 is taka 17. <laughs> 9 plus 9 is pink, 9 plus 9 is 17. The more stupid you are, I'm saying in our world, in our world, yeah, it taka works. There's, you don't see ain't soif. In the higher world, in Olam is ain't soif, post symptom, they know ain't soif, they feel ain't soif, but it's already called the world. <laughs> To speak about the world, it's like 9 plus 9 equals 17. In other words, it's the way Ain Saif is felt within a reality where you can understand time and space. But you know that the truth is that it's infinite. But there's already a vocabulary that you can discuss. You can discuss this way, you can discuss that way. The, the interesting that the, the Rebbe is using the, 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 the word, the world. Oilam yeah. Masa Ain Saif, yeah. And, uh, you would think that the world was created post Right, so 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 already even in post symptom you have the gilu of Ain Saif, but it's in a post symptom reality, hence it's called Oilam. Yeah. So that's also in in, in, in post symptom this Boina Oilam is a machrivan, that's Oilamatayu. And then Oilamatikun is Atsilis is built on that. Just to clarify that uh, there is a Lushan in the Mimer. There is a Lushan in the Mimer on page at base. He just quote from the original Basi Lagani. Which is which is quite a chiddush to use the word Oilam is Ha'in Saif Lifne Hat Simtsum. In other words, to use the word Oilam, world, pre I'm just saying there is that expression. Even though in the explanation, generally, Oilam is Ha'in Saif he's seeing as post Simtsum, which is Ak. And then Atsilas and then Bia. I guess on you know the more subtle, more subtle, more subtle levels, even in pre symptom the way infinity imagines finiteness, perhaps, is the way the world is called Ain Saif Lifnat Simpsum. The way infinity imagines finiteness, but it's all an expression of infinity, but it's already the source for something that one day will be finite. When you imagine something, it's still inside of you but it becomes a source for something else. Just like in Atzillus, there's Kalim. Over there, it's not limited, but it becomes a source for the limitedness of Bia. So maybe on higher levels, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Ein Saif Lifnat Simpson can become a source for Elamus. Actually, it must be, because in order for concepts to emerge. It first has to exist in the source before it emerges. And it's not in Dak Min Hadak, subtle. But, but I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go back, not to ruin the idea that all of this is relevant the way it's experienced in a person. As we will see, the neshamas, oilamas, neshamas, the neshamas is the one that holds on to all the extremes and won't give up. Consciousness won't give up on the two polar opposites of elikus and oilamas. It's the, it's the interlacing link Right? It's diffusing between the two. And that's why paradox is so essential to consciousness. You're with us? That's not psychology, that's chiddush. <laughs> we described here, I said that most of history, people are struggling, what's consciousness? It's so elusive. We know it's there. There are people who say it's not there. You're just a machine. Fun. But I'm, okay, if you want to believe that, Gesundheit. You know, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not our discussion today. But everybody knows there's consciousness, right? <laughs> just like people know there's choice, they know there's consciousness. Even though we can argue a whole day, there is. It's not. It's an illusion. It's not. But what is this? What is this? It's so elusive. It's so, it's so elusive. And what's the difference between animal consciousness and human consciousness? It's also... We know there's a quantum leap there. We know there's a quantum. There's something that I'm dealing with that the chimpanzee is not dealing with, that the rat is not dealing with, the elephant. With all respect to uh, the brilliance of animals and the sensitivity of animals and the spirituality of animals and the beauty of animals and the emotions of animals. So that's what the Baal Shem Tov was describing, that in every reality there's Olamus, Neshamus, and Alakus. Olamus is one realm of reality. It includes a lot, but it's one realm. Elokus is, so to speak, another realm of reality. It's everything, but it's a realm of reality. And the Shamas is the, 
is the experience of all of it. And in the language of this Maimah, it's Tachtiyim, Shniyim, Shlishim of the Teva. And it's Olam is Ha'ein Saif, which is a Lakus Mamash. And then there's Neshamas, which is a Lakus. <laughs> and then there's Olamas, which are worlds. And in the language of Kabbalah, of the Ramaz, it's Adam Kadmon, or Olam is Ha'ein Saif, after the Tzimtzum. And then you have Atzilus, where there's Kalim. And then you have Briyat Sirasiya, where there's period, where there's separation. So I was describing that this definition of consciousness as Kalim, Neshamas has come from Kalim, is really the undefined becoming defined. That's consciousness. Consciousness is the aspiration to define the undefined, to experience the infinite, to experience the undefined. If consciousness would not be elusive, it would not be consciousness. It's, it, that's what it is. It's, it's trying to make sense, trying to bring into experience something that's inexperiential, something that's undefined states of reality to become reality, <laughs> to be able to, to, to grasp. Because consciousness is an experience. Consciousness is some mitzias. It's mitzias. It's Caleb. There's some ego. Not a, not a bad ego, but there's some ego. There's some tfisa. It's ke- that's what Caleb are. Caleb are the way the Ain Soif is channeled through experience. Chachma, Bina, Das, Chesed, Gvura, Teferis. So consciousness is really the, the bridge between the infinite and the finite, between the undefined and the defined. And that's its, its incredible quality. Does any of this resonate with anybody? <laughs> You're with us, huh? Yeah, that's what a neshama is. So the Baal Tov said, in every word you have these three things, Olamas, Neshamas, and Alakus. Tzoyer Tassala Teva means open up the light, let the light come into the word. In other words, experience it on a level of Neshamas, Olamas, Alakus. Like, can you really understand it? Like the same teaching blind people, they, they're always blind. When you're teaching them three such things like colors, this and that, so it's something like this. No? We, really if we let go of everything, we can more than understand it, we can experience it. If we let go, the hardest part is not understanding. The hardest part is letting go. <laughs> and then you know already. It's there. It's, it's, it's who I am. The letting go is the hardest part. Whenever I'm having a conversation with somebody, the Baal Shem Tov would ask the first question. Are we talking, on which frequency are we talking? We're talking on the frequency of Olamas, Neshamas, or Helikos. Just answer that question and then we can move on. <laughs> It's very good for marriages, by the way. You sit down with your spouse to talk. So which frequency are we on? Are we in frequency of Eilamus? Okay. Neshamus or Elikus? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. If they ask the marriage therapists, what's the language of Neshamus? What's the language of Eilamus? What's the language of Elikus? Huh? <laughs> Because if I'm talking Olamis and she's talking Neshamas, yeah, you're on one level of the Teva, she's on another level of the Teva, which is normal. Because, you know, animals were on one level and humans were on another level and the garbage was on another level. Right? You know what Rashi says, yeah? The Zevel, because that's really, <laughs> it's completely different frequencies. What's the consciousness of the animal? What's the consciousness of the human being? What's the consciousness of the garbage? But the Baal Shem Tov says you have to connect the three frequencies. You have to bring them together. You have to open up a light to Olamas that it should be able to connect to Neshamas through which it connects with Elikos. And the Neshama is the, is the, at the vortex of it. The Neshama is the Sula Mutz of Arts of Eroshim The ladder that stands on the ground and its head reaches heaven, right? Even the Malachim go up and down, as we'll see. That's Neshama. <coughs> Letting go of the ego, letting go of the ego that 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 blocks reality. Not letting go of the ego that, uh, <laughs> in the sense that you know you become a shmata, like we spoke last time. Yeah. You shmata your ego. I'm such a shmata. It's not like different. Ego. You're right. Maybe big ego. You're right. You can't you can't heal ego with ego. You can't heal ego with ego. Because you're replacing problem one with problem two. That's true. You can only heal ego with ain't safe. That's true. <laughs> That's important. We try to heal ego with ego. One ego is not working. I'll bring in another ego. But 
I'm, I'm creating the first problem again. It's, it's very vulnerable. It may last for a few months, but it's not, it doesn't have the power. You have to heal with something that transcends the problem. Make sense? It's actually interesting. In mathematics, there is a concept called complex numbers. Complex numbers, yeah. They don't exist. It's right. Because we know what the real numbers are, right? Decimal numbers, real numbers. Yeah. But complex numbers were invented. They're imaginary numbers. Right. But they were invented to actually explain concepts in physics in a much simpler place. So basically, it's a language that well. suddenly we can express electricity and, and, and many other civil engineering issues in a simple way. Although those numbers in reality don't exist. Don't exist. It's a really mental bridge. Why are you mentioning that? Because it's a bridge between infinity oh, and oh. So you're saying complex numbers in mathematics, not that the numbers exist. It's a vocabulary created to be able to define and articulate transcendent or abstract ideas. You see it, so you said it more beautiful than I saw it. Without knowing what I was saying. Without knowing what I was saying. <laughs> now let's, let's not forget the Nekudah. Nekudah is not here ideas, you know, to play with ideas. The Nekudah is Lamata Adin Tachlis. <laughs> That Eirein Seif is Lamata Adin Tachlis. What does Lamata Adin Tachlis mean? Don't think it means, he says, Ak. <laughs> Don't think it means Atzillus. <laughs> Even though you would think it might, think, might be those. Because those realities are already called Mata in the sense that they are worlds. But that's not the Lamata Adin Tachlis. When you say low, low, low to no end, it's low to no end. For this, we introduce the third dimension, which is where separation happens. And you have to understand the Chiddush in this. In Kabbalah, there's an expression. This is an expression from the Ramak, Rabbi Moshe Kodavero. I'm just going to say it. Yosem Misha'en Aroich. Asiyah, Me'atzilus, is Ein Aroich, Atzilus Me'en Soif. The distance between Atzilus and Asiyah is infinitely less than the distance between Atzilus and what's higher than Atzilus. The distance between Atzillus and Asiya, which is distant. Asiya is our world. <laughs> Atzillus is divine. Atzillus is God's world. When I say God's world, I mean a world in which godliness is completely the reality of it. It's not divorced. It says the Ramak, the difference between Asiya and Atzillus is smaller. It's infinite, but it's smaller it, as though with this levels of infinity. That's an, another idea. It's smaller than between Atzillus and higher than Atzillus. What he's saying is that you have to understand that Atzillus, even though it's, we call it Alakos and sometimes Ein Saif, but because it's spheres, because it's Kalim, understand what a quantum leap that is from a pre Kalim reality. Right? But yet, what he's saying here is that Atzillus and the Olamus Ein Saif have that still commonality, despite the infinite difference that they're both Kalim for Ein Saif because it's an oilam of achdos. And as long as there's achdos, there's oneness, you're always a keli for Ein Saif. Even though Atzillus is kelim, and kelim is lecha oida, defies Ein Saif, it's still a keli for Ein Saif. Because it's the world of achdos. There's a seamlessness, there's a flow, there's connection, there's still attachment. What happens in Bria Yitzir Asi is, over here there's a true quantum leap in the sense that here, the possibility for fragmentation, for separation, for detachment, or the word I was using was disassociation, on all levels of disassociation, that's what's introduced. By Hashem, He's the one who creates this B'riyitzit Asi. And that's the Chiddush of the Zohar, that even as you go down below where there's no Gili of Ein Tzoyf, Absolutely not. And they're not a keli for Ein Saif. Because if it would be, it wouldn't be Bria, it wouldn't be Yitzir, it wouldn't be Asiya. There's a sense of detachment. Nonetheless, that too, <laughs> that too is a revelation of Ein Saif, which needs explanation, of course. But that's, uh, that was the point. What does this mean in a person's life? Lamayna Just mind games? You threw out another few words. How's it going to help you in your job today? Nuna Bazilia, you want to answer that question? (laughs) 
So what we're going to see is... Very good. Basically, Einoid Mulvada. Good, Einoid Mulvada. That always, that always works in Chassidus. That always works. <laughs> and it's true. Einoid Mulvada. And what does that mean? So fine, Einoid Mulvada. <laughs> let, let me, let, uh, somebody once said, I remember, <laughs> Einoid Mulvadi. <laughs> you understand? It's a very subtle... Uh, <laughs> Einoid Mulvada could become Einoid Mulvada. <laughs> We had a let's once. When I was a bacha. So, was a, so it's, it's always been the puzzle. Ani Hashem loy shanisi. He would say, Ani va Hashem loy shanisi. <laughs> Ani va Hashem loy shanisi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand Yiddish. It's the same as the other one. It's the No, no, it's a good question. We'll see later that when you say Lamata, the Tachlis itself, and that itself, there's the way it's Briya, the way it's Yitzhida, the way it's Asiya, but still in holiness, in Kedusha. And then there is the way it goes into Klippa. And in Klippa itself, there's levels. And Lamata den Tachlis means even in the lowest of the lowest of the low. It's all part of Lamata den Tachlis, but that itself is going to be a whole system of how low, how low do you really go? Is there a point where you say, you're just too low? Is there a point I look in the mirror and I say, I'm just, I'm just too low? Which it seems like it. Uh, at some point, you say, "You're just a low life." I'm just a low life, not just low, but low of low, low, low. What they call, you know, this the scum of the earth. Ah, huh? rock bottom. Aden tachlis. Aden tachlis. This part Hashem's rat song. So it's spirit and condition. It's it's so we say oiden sof lamata den tachlis. The result of that is that's going to be the last line of this Maimer, that nothing can get lost. The reason nothing can get lost is because nothing is ever lost. Not because you're going to find it, because <laughs> it was never lost. Because what it really is, is even though the distortions can be unbelievably painful and wreak havoc, no question. <laughs> this is not a romanticization of, uh, of reality on all levels. But it's the ultimate source of tikkun for the world. Right? That's why Geula is embedded in the DNA of Judaism. It's, it's, the Medrash says, it's Ruch HaShal Melech HaMashiach. Not because one day there's going to be a savior who's going to do good things for the world. It's because essentially all of life is a discovery of Ein Tzayf. And even in the lowest place, you're going to see that it was all Ein Soif. The problem was distortion. The problem was perception. And even perception is part of Lamata Adin Tachlis. And that's the moment where there's a full tikkun. Because when you realize that even your perception, perception is also reality, right? All reality is perception. In fact, there's no reality outside of perception. When you realize even the perception was the Ein Soif trying to make sense of itself, so then it's not like the evil has to be transformed. You realize the whole negativity was just a, a misinterpretation. The misinterpretation itself was a misinterpretation. And that's redemption. In our own lives, what it means is that there's really no bad parts. And that's what we're going to be learning here. When I say no bad parts, you know, of course there's bad parts. <laughs> you know what I wanted to do yesterday? <laughs> oh, you know what I did yesterday? Forget about what I wanted to do, what I did. What do you mean, no bad parts? So you have to be careful. Of course, a person can be very, very destructive. And a person could be very, very dysfunctional. And we can have inside of us very, very toxic and dysfunctional and destructive forces. We call it the Yetzirah, right? The evil inclination. But in the ultimate equation, we talk about the transformation of everything. How does that happen? Not because one day God is going to come with atomic bombs and blow up the Yetzirah and nuke the Yetzirah. So if everything Yetzirah is nuked, there'll only be a Yetzirah. 
That's a very uh, polarized vision of reality. What happens is, we're going we're gonna, to we'll learn the pnimius of the Yetzirah. The real, real pnimius. Even in the lowest places, even in the lowest places, the Ein Soif is fully present there. I have to open myself up to it. And that means God's, that's what he says in the beginning of the Bible, Hashem put his life on the line. Because when you go to those places, it's painful. If I go to a place where I can be hijacked and abducted and manipulated and exploited to the opposite of who I am and I'm going to let it happen and I'm not going to run away. You know how painful that is? Why do we disassociate? Why? Pain. <laughs> I'm not going to stay here. I'm not staying here. To stay here, that's Pshat Ima Yanoichi Betzara. It doesn't mean Ima Yanoichi Betzara is wherever you are, God builds bleachers. He gets a seat, he buys a ticket, he gets it, and he watches it. That's not what Ima Yanoichi Betzara means. <laughs> Ima Yanoichi Betzara means Hashem says, wherever you are, I'm here. I didn't run away. I'm going to watch it. I'm, I have a screen. <laughs> I have a screen in Atzillas. I see everything. Not only that, I'll feel your pain. I'll comfort you. That's all true, Avada. But Ima Yanoichi Betzara here means something much deeper. Hashoichin itam besoich to moisam. Doesn't mean even though you're Tameh, I'm still calling myself your father. I'm not connect. I'm not disconnected. It's much deeper than that. It's that the Tzara itself is me. Ima Yanoichi Betzara means the experience itself is me. <laughs> I'm not just watching it. The Eirin Tzayf Lamata Adin Tachlis means... It's the Ein Soif itself that's, that's, so to speak, being hijacked and, and, and manipulated and is so vulnerable and is going through that journey. Avada. Avada. That's true. It goes back to the question of Tzimtzum Kipshuta, Tzimtzum Nat Kipshuta. You're right. You're right. Alpiteri Sabal Shem the Achtos is so profound that there's no separation. But that also means that the hope... It's not just there's hope that you will go to a good place. It's much deeper than that. The hope is already right now. You just have to unburden, unburden and open up the reality of what's happening. So it's a very, it's a very deep paradigm shift. And today, in the, this today, like everything, it opens up in, in, in the, you know, the Baal Shem Tev, the they opened up the air and then the world ultimately receives it. In the new systems of recent years of psychology, Internal family systems, for example, is a model. And other models, it's, it's going more and more to this Nakuda, where it's not, uh, you know, exposing you to your evil or, uh, or, 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 or teaching you how to ignore parts of yourself or to deal with parts of yourself or to fight parts of yourself, which all have a place. It's all a skafia. But it's really learning <laughs> that everything you thought was so bad and negative was really and that's, a, that's, that's, that's unbelievable because it shows how deep the goodness is, the kayach hatoif. It's easier said than done because <laughs> it's, it's scary, it's darkness, but even the darkness is Eirin Seif. It says in Tehillim, im esak shamayim sham ata, the Alter Rebbe's son was the middle of Rebbe, so there was once a younger man who came to him because he, uh, difficult, you know, spiritual challenges he had. It was in Yanam of Chatas Norim, you know, things in, in, within the intimate realm of a person's life. And he opened up to the, to the middle of Rebbe. The middle of Rebbe rolled up his sleeve and he showed him that uh, his, his skin was shriveled. It was like tzafad oire al atzma. It is an expression. His skin was shriveled up. Huh? Goosebumps. Not goosebumps. Like uh, skin, like dried, like like a little emaciated. Uh, it, and he looks at him and he said, "This dos is your kumen from dain chatas norim. This came from your uh, from what happened by you." So the Rebbe, the Lubavitch Rebbe, said over the story. Actually, in the first bus in Lagani, he said over the story, he was crying. He told him or before, like he had it before. No, he had it. He said, this is because of what you... Not, not why he told me. Like, 
you, you can't dry up your skin in the middle of a conversation. It'll be hard. It's, it's, something happened over there. It happens over the years. So at first glance, it's very strange. Somebody's coming, confessing, wants a tikkun. What do you do? You encourage them. <laughs> you give them a derech tshuva. I mean, heresi <laughs> derech tshuva. Right, like we say in the Ila, you know, Ad Yoy Moisay Techakaloy, God waits. What, what, encourage him, give him a derech. What? This is more guilt. Now, oh, you destroyed me too. So the Rebbe said it was Punk Farket. What the middle of the Rebbe was telling him is, don't think you were ever alone. <laughs> I was right there with you. I wasn't on your Rebbe only when you showed up in full spiritual robust posture. I was your Rebbe even in the darkest places. Here, it's on my skin. What does that mean? That means I'm not staying there, so you're also not staying there. If I was there, what do they say in Breslau from Reb Nachman? Right? If you think you could destroy the world, so then believe you could build the world. You're not just, you're not just a killer. If you could destroy so many people, so you can also build so many people. I was there with you. <laughs> Once you know I was there with you, then we're going up. I'm not staying there, so you're also not staying there. Don't think I detached. It's the deepest form of empathy. The deepest form of empathy is not saying, I'm sorry, I feel bad. Uh, but that, that's beautiful. The deepest form of empathy is, can you be there with me? Achtos, achtos. And that's hard. I'm ready to be nice. I'm a nice person. I'm a gentleman. I'm not I won't even be judgmental, which is a nice madrega. It's not a nice madrega not to be judgmental. But that's not the vart. That's not the vart. Can you be there with me? That's where all healing comes from. Emes? Huh? Reb Meshazev. Huh? Here are big therapists. That's it's true. You can try it out, you'll see. Try it out, you'll see. I know a person, I'll just I know a person. He had a crazy, crazy childhood. Unbelievable, like, Shiva Maduri Gehenna, emotionally, sexually, physically. And uh, it, 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 we're learning here, that I wanted to say it messed him up. We're learning here that you can't get messed up, but it, at least on some level of reality, it messed him up very badly. And... He told me there was somebody in his life at some point. He went through a process of discovery and healing, but still he struggled a lot because it's it's deep issues like we spoke about. It's stuff that happens before your eye is formed. So somebody messed with you before you were congealed. So it's very toxic. It's, it's very dangerous. You understand? He was messed with before he had identity. So there was nobody to hold on to anything. There's no Kaylee. You understand? There's no Kaylee. There's no Kaylee. So you don't know who you are. You, your trauma, it's all the same thing. He said there was once a person in his life, somebody close to him, you know, who looked him in the eyes. And I asked him, what was the moment of healing for you? Like, the, not healing, but transformation. Somebody looked him in the eyes. Somebody who knew him very well and knew the whole story. And, and that person was, was like crying. And the person said, I am so sorry for what you went through. You would think simple words, right? But they were genuine. And for this person, almost in a moment, I'm not going to say it undid, that would be stupid and not true, but it brought so much comfort and, and dignity to his life. What did the person do? <laughs> what did the person do? He was not alone. They went into that place with him. It wasn't an explanation. It wasn't a pathway forward. Because the soul knows everything. The soul knows how to heal. <laughs> the soul knows how to heal. But it's eclipsed. I'm in isolation. I'm alone. So that, that connection, that connection, that attachment, that deep relation, relational energy, it... it it allowed the person to see themselves from a different perspective. Yeah, yeah. Why can't he do it to himself? 
him saying it to himself for 20 years won't be the same. Why not? Could you answer that question? Why, if I say that to myself for 20 years, it doesn't have the power of that person telling it to me? Because I don't believe me. <laughs> That's part of it. I don't believe me. When I say, oh, you, I'm sorry, <laughs> right? Which I is saying I'm sorry? <laughs> the I that doesn't exist. Thank you. You don't even exist. Who are you to tell me I'm sorry? <laughs> but the other person, right? That's like a real self. It, it, it makes you, it makes that, that's, so that's what the Rebbe, the Mithra Rebbe was telling him. You see this, don't think I was detached. It wasn't now feel more guilty. <laughs> it was, I'm, I'm, I'm is kashos, betachlis is achtos. Huh? He showed it on his skin, he didn't have to mean it. <laughs> The Rebbe said it over the first Basi Lagani, Tavshin Yer Aleph. He was trying to bring out what his kash, what means connection. What it means connection. And he said, in Dafke, the Mittler Rebbe, the Mittler Rebbe was uh, like an Ashama. He was Kulay Alakus. He was not, he didn't know what Surah He was complete. And he said, but this didn't, when he connected to his students, to his Chassidim, to his Talmud, this was the level of connection. That's the story. When the Mithla Rebbe was learning and a baby fell out of the crib and he didn't, it was his own baby, he didn't hear. And the Alter Rebbe was on the a higher floor and he came down, he picked up the baby and then he gave him uh, a, few, a few weeks later, a few days later, he told him that if you're learning and you don't hear the Kal Yelet Boicha, so something is wrong in the learning. <laughs> he didn't say, even when you're learning, you have to hear a baby crying. He said, if, he said much more. If you're learning, and because of that, you don't hear a baby, a child weeping, there's something missing in the learning. His father trained him. <laughs> you hear the voice from the Alter Rebbe. You could say, you have to be a mensch. Don't, don't go run away. That's not what he said. He said, it's felt up, it's in the Teira. Usually you would say, it's good Teira. If you don't hear a baby crying, it means you're learning well, right? <laughs> the Alter Rebbe said, superficially, yeah, it means you're an intellectual. But really, there's something missing in the Torah. If the Torah causes you not to hear somebody, a, a child crying, something is not... Uh, <laughs> if there would be the Lekus in the Torah, it wouldn't only be Olamus in the Torah. If there would be the Lekus in the Torah, you would hear the baby crying. I think that story captures a very, very fundamental idea of Torah. Which Torah are you connecting to? You understand? Is it the Torah of connection? Or it's the Torah of, uh, I'm going to become uh, a genius and better than everybody else. Then it's already a fake Torah. Like the Gemara says, it's not always Sam Chaim. Vazaktir. have to remind me. Yeah, I said over, when the Rebbe said over the story, he said that he heard from his father-in-law that the Alter Rebbe lived on the higher floor, up the second floor, and the Mitla Rebbe lived on the lower floor. And the baby fell down. So he said, why did he have to say that? Just to part. So he said, there's a diok here. It says in Zoya, there's two levels of Achdus Hashem, Yechud Tata and Yechud Ilah. The lower level of unity and the higher level of unity. Right? So he said, Al Terebat Givoin Tafen Hechsten Shtak. He lived on the higher floors, Yechud Ilah. Shalishim. Tachtiim Shneim Shlishim. Very good. Tachtiim Shneim Shlishim. That's it. Yechud Ilah. An Afal Pikain. He heard the Kal Yalad Boicha. The middle of that, but didn't. Not, and it's not Afa began, it's because of that. Like the Maisa with Yom Kippur. You know the Maisa Yom Kippur, middle of Kol Nidre. In Liyajne, he was in by Kol Nidre, in the middle of davening with his talus, and suddenly in the middle of Kol Nidre, you know, everybody is very serious. He took off his talus, he took off his kittel, and he left Shul. He left Shul. You don't know the Maisa? It's a half of the Kamaisa. He left Shul. And at the end of the city, at the end of the shtetl, Lyajna, it's a, it's, a, it's a town in Belarus, you could visit it. There's nothing left there, the Nazis killed everybody. But Lyajna, it's still there. At the end of the shtetl he went, there was a Yoledis, there was a woman, a mother who gave birth a few days before. And it was the night of Kol Nidris. So everybody wanted to go to Shul, you know, Yom Kippur, people want to go to Shul. So they left her alone with the baby. And she was in a very difficult situation. The baby was crying and she got sick. There was nobody there to help her. And Al Tereb on Yom Kippur, he took wood, he chopped it up, he put it in the fireplace, he lit a fire, 
and he, he cooked a yoich, a, 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 a soup, and he fed the mother so she could nurse the baby. And she went out, Miklal Sakana, she went out from danger. And then he went back to Shul. So the Rebbe asked, he said, this is what he heard. This is the story he heard it from his father-in-law. So he said, what's the Chiddush of the story? The Gemara says, mitzvah begadl, pikuach nefesh, it's a mitzvah. You don't tell a child, you know, you go, you, you go help him. It's a mitzvah begadl, because you don't want in a further situation, you can say, oh, we need a child, we need somebody else. Pikuach nefesh is doicha. So the Alter Rebbe was the Gadol, so he went himself. He says, that's not the Chiddush of the story. The Chiddush of the story is that Anya Yom Kippur, in the Talas, in the middle of Kol Nidre, Hated their filt, Hated their filt, he felt the pain of the, of the elders. He heard the baby cry. Huh? I thought the Gadol should be like the biggest rabbi, not that it's a big person. Like if it's a people, of course. Like you should not notice it. Like like no, Gadol, Gadol. And there's a reason for it. It says, it says in Allah, because you don't want that the next time. Not just God, the even, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what mitzvah begadl means. I no, no, I meant great in stature. Because you shouldn't think that, uh, that uh, next time, if, 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 there's only, if only he's there, he's not allowed to do it. So even when other people are there, but that's what Pashtus. On a deeper level, mitzvah begadl means the more gadl you are, the more you feel it. So the, so, so, so the more you feel the obligation. And all this brings out in Akuda that Eirin Seif Lamata De Tachlis is a connection that is so profound that it's not just I'm here, but I'm, it's completely one. It's not just I'm here, but this is me. This becomes me. God allows himself to be defined by Lamata De Tachlis. That's the ultimate paradox. Kalim is not the ultimate paradox. Because <laughs> Kalim means structure, but I'm a vessel. I'm a vessel. I want to be a vessel. I want to contain you. I know that containers are brutal <laughs> because they limit. But I want to limit you. I want to be here. That's Kalim. So that God allows himself to be defined by Kalim. Okay. He says, ain't the Pella. <laughs> it's not the Pella. That's not the Pella. That I allow myself to be defined by Lamata Adin Tachlis, by Pirud, by the separation, that's the Pella. That I allow myself to be defined by structure, it's hard. <laughs> and the Ramak says it's even bigger Chiddush than anything else. But it's not the ultimate Pella. First taste? Is it, is it, how, how is Hashem revealed by Chiddush? Oh, uh, uh, the Frex is good. But, but that, that, that's the Vart. That to allow the self to remain present, and not just remain present, like to be defined by that which is opposite of you, that's Messiris Nefesh. The only, that's, that's, that's the Messiris Nefesh of Hashem. That's the word, what does Messiris Nefesh mean? Messiris Nefesh means you give up the self. You give up even the image of the self. You give up the self. You put yourself on the line to the point that he allows himself to become defined by that which is mamish opposite. Not a keli. You're not a keli. He's not a keli. And that's why and that's why nobody's going to be lost. <laughs> because it's all, it's all him. And that's the most vulnerable moment in the relationship. To realize you were there. Not only you were there, this is you. Wow. It's very, very emotionally healing. It's very emotional. Is it not the biggest proof that since we're not here? This is dead. This is Teres of Hashem. That Simtzim is not Kipshuta. You're right. If you say Simtzim Kipshuta, but that's a word of Chesidus. <laughs> you can't prove Chesidus from Chesidus. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Teres of Chesidus. Simtzim Shalai Kipshuta is a layer of reality. It's a truth in reality. Every shit in Kabbalah is real. It's true. It's not true or false. Tzimtzum Shalai Kipshuta is describing a certain layer of reality. And it's true. You understand? There's a layer of reality where this is how things are experienced. And there's validity to it. Every shit in Kabbalah, every shit in Torah is true. Doesn't mean it's halacha, but it's true. It's MS. 
It's describing a real frequency. <laughs> it's a real truth. In the ultimate world, there's no contradictions. There are contradictions, but that's also true. That's also part of it. Rabbi Shem Tov did it by, by being Mevatel is in Kippur, the only person. <coughs> so it's hard to know which, which, um, where El Kuz. There wasn't a question by him. How do we know? It's very hard to know. Hmm? Situation. Because El Kuz is everywhere, really. We don't see it, but every affinity is really El Kuz. Somebody once asked Al Terebbe. What's the difference between a maskil and an oivid in Atsilas? A maskil means a philosopher in godliness. An oivid is somebody who works on themselves, who internalizes it. So he says, what's the difference between a maskil and an oivid in Atsilas? So he said, haben ageshmak in Atsitza, or the haben ageshmak in Toive Tanayidin. The hest? Haben ageshmak in Atsitza, it says in Zoya that the tzitzis, the four corners of the Merkava, the four parts of the Merkava. Pnei Arye, Pnei Shur, Pnei Adam, Pnei Nesher, the Dalit tzitzis. Haben HaGeshmak in Atzitza, that's Haskala. And the Haben HaGeshmak in Tevet and being there for somebody, that's Havayda. Dalit Rebbe. If you don't understand what Ein Soif is, it's not such a Chiddush. If you understand what Ein Soif is, it's the ultimate Chiddush. I thought I'm going to give today a minute introduction and we're going to go right into the text. But uh, Now, I didn't really explain anything today. I'm just, I'm just acknowledging that. Right? No, I'm just... I'm just a, what? <laughs> okay, thank you for agreeing. <laughs> I'm saying I didn't really explain anything. Like, it's, it's beautiful words. It doesn't mean I'm there. It means it's me. <laughs> I'm allowing myself to be defined by that. But I, I, want, you to, I want you to be toifas, the chidushim here. The, the, the chidushim here. Not I'm here. Which is also very big. To be present is big. But it's much deeper. I'm allowing myself to be defined by this. I'm being transformed by what's happening. I'm becoming a new reality which is completely disassociated from me. Does anybody know that pain? Now what does this mean in people's lives? It means that the soul does the same thing. When you go into a place where you have to detach yourself from yourself, and you know why you have to do that? Because it's too painful to stay yourself. Who, who went in over there? So you think, in psychology they'll tell you it was a fake self. It was a fake self that detached from the real self. You became a shell of a person. Like a child who went through a lot of abuse, they disassociate. So the abuse is now only on the shell. So myself is in exile because I can't feel the pain. What we're saying here is something much deeper happened. The real core was right there. Even in the fake self that became something else, the I doesn't leave. Because the pain in that is very, very deep because detachment is safety. God says, no, I don't do that. I'm going into the war zone. What does it mean a war zone? A war zone means not I'm going to watch you. I'm going to be you. But what does that really mean? That really means that you were never, ever detached. You were never, ever, ever detached. You were always connected with everything. The detachment itself is a vocabulary that is part of the Lamata Adein Tachlis, which is also an expression of Ein Soif, the way, it's, the way it handles its reality in Lamata Adein Tachlis, but really we're going to be Megala the Ein Soif there. If we can experience this, which is the hardest part, we have to understand it, and we have to experience it. Understanding is important, but experiencing is where things happen. If we can experience this. It's very vulnerable, because this means I have to give up even on the fact that I'm a victim. And we don't always want to do that. 
You know, sometimes the hardest thing is to say, I'm not a victim, I'm healthy. <laughs> People don't like that always. No, 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 I'm messed up. It's almost like a badge of honor, you know. Baruch Hashem, I'm messed up, I'm traumatized. I'm going to be in therapy, even Mashiach won't heal me. It's almost like a certain uh, <laughs> identity. <laughs> to give up on that is not so easy. <laughs> you know, that's also an obsession. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm dysfunctional. It's also a ticket almost. Like, you're having, I'm having a bad day? Of course. Well, what do you expect? You know what I went through? Of course. I should have a bad week. I have a bad year. In a way, it becomes an achrayis also. If, if, in, in a good way, in Achrayas. In other words, you're, 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 you're whole. You're not sick. <laughs> you just have to see it that way. Okay, I just want to learn one paragraph because I don't want to fall too behind. I'll be mamish like five, six minutes and then we'll conclude. Be'ezer Hashem will learn also Sunday morning because I want to try to finish the Maimer. Um, your Shvat is on Wednesday, so, I want to, uh, so we'll learn also Sunday morning, Bli Neder, at 8. Like, like like this past Sunday as well. But I want to learn one, one, one paragraph here. We're on the bottom of page Yud Gimel, Siv Gimel. The bottom of page Yud Gimel in this country, Siv Gimel. By the way, the source sheets are on the website, on the yeshiva.net, if you want to ever download. Umam Shech Bahamaymer. Means the world of because that's called mata, that's called low. The kalim It's what we discussed in the Tuesday Shear. Kalim of Atsilis are like the body to the soul. Bri Yitzir Asiyah are like the garments of the body. There's a big difference. Guf and Hashama are two separate things, but they're not. They become one. The miracle of the body is, it is your soul. It's not just a machine in which your soul functions. It's one of the, the deepest things we have to understand about the body. We look at the body and we're taught... The body has a battery. The battery is called the neshama. That's not the vart. <laughs> neshama and guf is a muscle for atzilus. It's not there's kalim and there's an oir in the keli. No. The keli is the oir. The keli becomes the oir. That's what real keli means. In spirituality, in physicality, a keli means I have a cup and you put the coffee in the cup. And spirituality doesn't work that way. When you're a keli for something, it means you are that. You understand? It's not, I have a key in the drawer. I have a, a file in the drawer. The drawer is a keli. It's physically. Spiritually, it's not two separate things. So when you say something is a keli for something, it means I become defined by you. I'm a keli. That's me. But it's, I, I don't become defined by you in your pristine transcendence. Rather, I become defined by you the way I can I can't define you. And that's the power of Kaylee. Kaylee is the way I become you, but the way I could become you, which is not you. It's only how, I much, I, how much I could become you. Like the eye is a Kaylee for vision, but what can I see? I can't see everything that's available, that's out there. I could see whatever my retina, right, has my, my uh, the eye has, I don't know, uh, <laughs> millions of sensors to be able to sense, uh, right, and access, and the brain interprets, and that's what I could see. So Kaylee is the oir, but it's the way the oir is experienced through the keli, which is not the oir in its pristine essence. That's the lamata of Atsilas, but it's one. And that's the beauty of guf. We, we talk about the wisdom of the body. The body knows the score. The body knows everything. Why? We, who made the body such a genius? How does every cell know everything? The answer is, the, the miracle of life is that the body becomes the soul. The soul becomes one with the body. Huh? That's why Mipsari Echzelika. The body is not a piece of dead flesh, and you put in a Duracell battery, right, for 80 years, for 100 years, so the body now is, is making noise. That's not a goof. 
everywhere. The definition of keli is that it becomes the oil. It's the way the oil is channeled through the keli. When you play a musical note, right? The, 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 the musical note is the keli, but it's the music. <laughs> What was before the or? How has this become the Kelly? What was before? There's an expression in Eitz Chaim. Mehis avus ha'oyr nasak mehis avus hei sof ayin vav sof. It's brought in Tanya Lamed Ches. Mehis avus ha'oyr from the thickness, from the density of oyr, the kelim are formed. Kelim are formed from oyr becoming dense. The more dense the oyr becomes, the more the kelim. The kelim is oyr. It's the transformation of oyr in a particular structure. That's what guf is. Guf is neshama. It's the way the neshama is experienced through the structure of the body with its limits. But the goof becomes the neshama. The goof itself is alive. It's not the soul is in the body. The goof is alive. The goof becomes a dover chai. It's not separable anymore. It's not separate anymore. That's why they deny the soul. Why do they deny the soul? They deny the soul. They say there's no soul. No, because the soul became so much connected and fused with the body that the body allows you to deny the soul. The soul did such a good job that you could deny it, right? Like somebody once said, they were learning Gemara. He says the Gemara is so clear. Yeah, what do you need, Rashi? <laughs> Rashi did such a good job. You think you don't need the best job you can do is when somebody thinks they don't need you. What's the, who's the best parent in the world? The parent that when the child grows up, he could be really independent. That's a good parent. <laughs> you did such a good job, I don't need you. Like in Chelem they said, right, the, sun, the moon is much more important than the sun because the sun shines when you don't need it. It's daytime, who needs it? You don't get the joke. <laughs> the, the, the neshama does such a good job on the goof, the goof doesn't need it. <laughs> the goof doesn't need it. The kalim of Atsilus, which is kalim for Erein Saif, is like the guf to the neshama. That's exactly what they're saying. Which is a gavaldik echidish that the guf becomes, that the neshama becomes guf, because the neshama is infinite and the guf is finite. My vision is now coming through my eyes. My hearing is coming through my, 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 my awareness is coming through my physical brain. I can't function any other way. After a person passes, the neshama's koiches are not processed through the guf. But the difference of life and death is not just the difference of taking out the battery. The body is transformed. And you see what happens to the body after death? It decomposes. It doesn't have a metzius anymore. It's not just it lives as a stone. It doesn't live as a stone. It's gone. Because once the body is alive, it becomes the neshama. And without it, there's no guf left. It's not like, okay, so let it be a rock. Let it stay in the earth like earth. Completely decomposed. Sefalertzich, like Shviris Aluchis. The Luchis are broken. That's why the broken of the Luchis is compared to the death of Tzadikim. You have Gufim that says the bodies of Tzadikim stay whole. But that's because of uh, there's something in the Guf that's still very much uh, Neshamadik. But it's a very unique thing in nature. Bodies decompose, besides the Etzim Luz. So you understand the word Gufal and Neshmasa? That today they love saying that there's no soul. The soul is an illusion. The reason you could say that is because this. <laughs> because of the fusion of the neshama and the guf. It's much more interesting to say that to say that the body is just a levush. Yeah. The body's not that's because the, the body's not a levush. The nervous system is alive. <laughs> it has everything there. It's, it becomes the neshama. It's a it's a gewaldic of art. That's why the body knows everything. <laughs> People know, how does the body you know? You know the body knows everything. The body keeps the score, as, as the famous book of uh, van der Kolk. The wisdom of the body. How does the body have such genius? <laughs> where, where did it learn? Which yeshiva? Can I go to that yeshiva? The answer is because the body is really ain't safe. So that's Atzilus. Bri Yitzir Asiya is like a lavush. <laughs> The garment is going to be on me my whole life. I may be in this jacket for the rest of my life, but it's not me. Nobody's going to say that. You may see me, if I dress nicely, I'll impress you. You may learn about me from my garments, my wealth, my dignity. My, you know, people invest a lot in their clothes. So the clothes may be a mirror through which you can see a person, real clothes. 
but it's not you. And that's what happens in B'ri Yitzir Asiyah. In Atzillus, everything is elokus. Even the Kalim are elokus. It's like the goof with the Neshama. B'ri Yitzir Asiyah is Kivayachal Hashem dressing up in a Levush. In other words, there's like a disconnect. <laughs> so you could grab the Levush and detach it from the person. That's the Chiddush. The world of separateness emerges. In other words, the world outside of Ein Saif, outside of infinity. You understand that transformation is everything. So the gap between Atzillus, Bri, Yitzir, Asiyah is a real moment of transcendental trauma. I had to use that word because there's a 1.1 million definitions for trauma with capital T. But probably one of the most potent and relevant is separation, separation real separation. There's no cohesive story anymore. The I has been broken into a thousand pieces, shattered into a thousand pieces. I can have a lot of pain. I can have sadness. I can experience difficult life, a difficult life. But there's a story, there's a cohesive self that's a Kaylee for everything. It's a Kaylee, you're still a Kaylee. Pirud means, yeah, now there's a, whole, a new reality that's not me. I don't know who's me. I may not even know the me. And that's a, that's, that, that's a, diff, that's a different quality. And it's, it's a, you become a different type of person. You could start crying when you think about the, the leap. Where does that begin in Elikos? That's the leap of Atzillus Tibriya. What do they say in English? You become a shell of yourself. What does a shell mean? You're a lavush. Where are you? I don't know. Here, I have your jacket. I have you, but you're not here. It's like a lavush. It's mamisha lavush. You're teufus devart. There's no keli anymore. There's a new reality now, a disconnect. And that's where isolation comes in. There's a disconnect from the self. There's a self that's disconnect from the self. And, but it, it lives. <laughs> It lives. What does it live off? It lives off something that's not the self. It's very powerful. Where does that come from in Kedusha? Everything has a source. This is the, this is the difference between Atzilus Abri Yitzhid So he says, It says in Pasach Elio, that's Zohar, Hagdamet Tekunizer, the Kama Levushin Tkinas God created many garments. The Koyal Bri Yitzhid Asiya Shem Levushin Bilvad Loira Kelem Datzilus. They become levushim for the light of Caleb. The Caleb are there, the Oedis are there, but they're levushim, they're garments. There's no Bria without Oed, there's no Bria without Kaili. But instead of calling them a Kaili for the Oed, you call them a levush for the Oed, a garment for the Oed. Now Bria is still a very functional world, it's a very holy world, Yitzir is a good world, Asiya could become toxic. But it begins... There's already a beginning, something called outside, outside of me. So let's put it this way. Let's say Hashem would have stopped the creation by Atzillus. <laughs> After Atzillus, he would say, Atkan! You know, the Big Bang is expanding universe, expands, expands, expands. The Gemara says in Chagiga, why is Hashem called Shaddai, Shin Dalad Yud? Because when he created the world, right, it was, it's interesting because it says Mamash and Gemara. The universe was snim- it was stretching, 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 stretching. And then Hashem said, die, die, stop. Because <laughs> if you go a little more, you know, they say the Big Bang would have gone a little faster, even off by a millisecond, you know where we would be. We would, everything would just explode a second after creation. So there had to be the die, stop, or at least slow down, stop. So there was a stop. Because you would just go into nothingness, oblivion. It had to, on the one hand, it had to expand because if there would be no expansion, it would become French toast. It would crunch up in the heat, right? And the other hand, it couldn't expand too much because then it would just be scattered. So Alpipnimi is it's very deep. There had to be the, the, the expansion. There had to be Hishtalshalus because if not, everything would get burnt up in Ein Saif. But if there's too much, if there's too much, you're just left without connection. So if God would have stopped the world after Atzillus, if he would have said die a little earlier, there would be no ability 
no ability for being disconnected. There would be an ability for Kalim, but not for disconnect. You understand? Because Kalim, yeah, structure, yeah, structure, yeah, but still ain't safe. In Bria started the ability for disconnect. That's the Chiddush of Bria. <laughs> Pirud, you're a Levush. There's something outside that's containing my life. Now understand how deep this is. In Bria, there's no trauma. Bria is godly. Bria is Einoid Mulvadri. But it's a Levush that's Teufus Alakus. The vocabulary of disconnect was introduced. I get you. It's beautiful. But I get you. I'm not a Kali anymore. I'm a Levush. I get Ain Soif. That's Bria. It's Moiradik. It's not like in Bria, there's a, there's, Bria, is not, Bria is not evil. Bria is holy. But what, what's holy? You know who's in Bria? Malachim, Neshama, is good, good guys. Bria is a very high world. But, so why, 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 why does it have such bad rap? Because over there, what's the concept? The concept is not Kaili, it's Levush. I dress up the Ain Saif. I experience the Ain Saif. So you just started to use, the, you started to use words that are ultimately based on disassociation, that could become disassociation. What does that mean in a person's life? The beginning, the, the genesis of, 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 of the breakdown of reality is not in dysfunction. That's where it comes out. It's in the way I perceive the I as a lavush for Ein Saif, rather than Ein Saif. That's where it happens. And that's why that's where the healing is. T-R-A-U-M-A doesn't begin in abuse. That's when it's materialized. It begins because the I is a levush. <laughs> it's not a keli. So there's no achdus. Ah, oh, so you're a levush for Ein Saif, and you are a despicable piece of garbage. That's what happens in Asiya. But the leap started with the change from Kaili to Lavush. So the healing is when I go from Lavush back to Kaili, and then from Kaili back to Oir. And that's Oilamus, Neshamus, Elikos. Oilamus is separate. From separateness I go back to Neshamus, which is a Kaili. And from Kali, I go back to Ur, which is a Lakus, which is beyond Caleb. The leap from Lavush to Kali is very profound, because Lavush means I am dressing you up. And Kali is one, oneness. Every one of these stages exists in the human psyche. What we're learning really here is a map of the human psyche using the language of Kabbalah and Chassid. This is pushed a map. You could map out in the psyche pre symptom <laughs> post symptom Ak, Atzilus, Bria, Yitzir, Asiya. In Asiya itself, all the levels. And the question is, which frequency you're living with right now? So the Baal Shem Tov says, this was the Baal Shem Tov's Revolutionary idea. At every moment of your life, look at your frequency and give it a diagnosis to understand where you are and if you're getting stuck. And then with ease, allow yourself to move from Olamas to Neshamas Talikos. The Chevra Teufus? Huh? That's good. If I feel that I'm Teufus everything, then probably Teufus nothing. Reb Meir Shapiro, the founder of Daf Yoimi, once came to America to fundraise. So uh, he got up at a shul's pack. Reb Meir Shapiro was a brilliant orator and a gone, and a very special man. He was the Rav of Lublin, the Rav of Lublin. And he came in America and he gave a beautiful speech. The shul was packed. He gave a shir, a pilpul for an hour or two hours. He came to fundraise for his yeshiva. And when he finished, people came over, Yeshikoyach. At the end, there was a, a yid waiting for him. He walks over at the end. He says, Rebbe, 
I sat there for two hours. I didn't understand a word you said. But you're probably here for a good cause, for your yeshiva. So here's a check. And he gave him a very nice check. He looks at him, he says, Du bist der einzige, was hat verstanden. You're the only one who understood. Verstehst? But there's a deep lesson in this. There's a deep lesson in this. One nekudah in Avoida, one nekudah in Avoida is worth a hundred years of Askala. One nekudah in which something translates into an actual emotional, behavioral result is, is worth more than understanding these things because not understanding it is very powerful. But that's where it really... It was the answer of us at Vashtana, you know what I mean, when I can go to the bank. If today when your child speaks to you, right, you're triggered. Forgive me for bringing it down to a very... <laughs> Very simple level. But you're triggered. You're, you're, you're really, really triggered. And you want to blow up, which means maybe scream, or even run away. You're not going to say anything, but you lose it. Huh? Toronto Rabbi Jacobson, sure. In the morning, Toronto Rabbi Jacobson. Yeah, whatever it is, whatever the escape is, it could be me, it could be somebody else, it could be even God himself. Michael, whatever, but it's an escape, and it's it's very very hard. It's 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 real. It's real. It's as real as it gets. Your body is screaming. So what would the Baal Shem Tov tell you at that moment? Not to deny the reality. You were triggered. You're not, you're, you're not a robot. You're not a computer. Mayach Shalt Lalev doesn't mean you deny your emotions, but in a very very beautiful and loving way, he would say now. Let's go from Eilamis to the Shamas, Talakus. What does that mean? It means I experienced an eye that is very, very fragile, that is very, very, very angry, that is very, very vulnerable, that is very dependent, that is very scared. I'm scared about my kid, I'm scared about my house, I'm, and I'm overwhelmed. Which I get it. Now can you also <laughs> feel that? And listen to yourself and identify a part of you that is in a place, not of Levushim, but of Kalim. In other words, if, if I can really experience myself now as part of Ein Soif, how would I react? Yeah, but I'm not. Uh, I'm angry. I get it. A part of me is in a place of Pirud. Fine. That's part of the life. God did that. It's not your fault. But that's what it means at every moment, this consciousness it's not, my point is, don't think this is abstract ideas that are made for neshamas of Atzillus. And for people who have time to learn Kabbalah and Chassidus and all these fancy, fancy madregas. It's the oxygen of how to live in a turbulent world and in a turbulent psyche and really comfortably navigate Olamis neshamas alakus tachtiyim shniyim mushlishim. Okay, my dear friends, have a beautiful day. We're here Shabbos. The next year in this Maimah will be Sunday morning, 8 o'clock, right here. Everybody is invited. And thank you for gracing us with your presence. This is Bossi Lagani. What level? Is it before the Simpson? Oh, Bossi Lagani. Bossi Lagani tried to bring it all together. <laughs> that was the Rebbe's whole union. <laughs> He's trying to heal the world. <laughs> That's why the Rebbe was into Mashiach. What's Mashiach? The Tikkun. But that's Ratzon? Hashem's Ratzon before even... Hashem wanted this world to be a Dira B'tachtayna. For this, He gives all the treasures. What's the deepest treasure He gives? It ain't safe. To wear to the soldiers. But it's not just He gives the treasures. He says He puts Himself on the line. Where does He put Himself on the line? That's what the Maim is explaining. And because he puts himself on the line, therefore, la yidach nidach, nobody will get lost. So it's way down, down. Nobody will get lost. Yeah. Right. The, 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 this mimer is a war on cynicism. The mimer is a, a declaration of war on cynicism. <laughs> huh? Based for cynicism is.
ציניות, ציניות, ציניש, ציניש. עדיין כבר נקומן. סבשתנן? You would type us everything? Okay. I'm very honest, I have to say the reason. Why would you call us kids that go and don't have insurance? And if so, if it really is that, how does their body, what is our theory to their body? Goyim have neshamas. It says clearly Goyim have neshamas. So Toysavis. It says that like Yechid and Chaya that... Goyim have neshamas. It says clearly in Toysavis. The question is what type of neshama? There's different type of souls. Yeah, it's not the type of a Jewish soul, but I have every, a Goy has a soul. There's an expression in Rambam and Hilchah Shemitah V'yoyvul at the end. Lo yishavit levi bilvad. Oh, beautiful Rambam that every he speaks about not only Shevet Levi but every person of the of the world, even non-Jews. That end of Hilchah Shmita V'yavah that dedicates their life to Hashem. I raise in the Skadish Kodesh Kadoshim. V'yia Hashem Chelkei V'goyrola, etc. Kodesh Kadosh about every person, Jew and non-Jew. Yes, there's different types of souls, there's different shlichas, different avoid, different mitzvahs, but every person has a soul. It says, Chaviv Adam, it says in Perkei Avos, Chaviv Adam, Shenivra, B'Tselam. person is precious, he was created in the image of Hashem. Every person. Not only that, Arizal says, and it's brought in Chara Yichud Vamun and Tanya, that everything has a soul. <laughs> the Arizal says, everything has a soul. Al Rebbe says, that's the Asara Mamar, is the divine energy that gives it life. Is the soul. And the meaning of that is, huh? Yeah, even an animal has a soul. It says, even a rock, an Evan has a soul. Even an Evan, and today we know in physics, even in a rock, you have a whole universe, a whole atomic, atomic structure and subatomic structure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's the thing? It can't happen in the Maime. Bossi Lagani Tavshin Yod Alef. The Rebbe did sell to Maes. Is it Gehed with the Rebbe did sell? For what's going to happen? Okay. But then... No, no, no. It's a Zox Gut. Zox Gut. But this is a Rebbe. A Rebbe means I don't detach. No, it's not that. Avade, does. The point, the, the, the middle of that, the middle of that, he says, I'm so connected to you that when you fell, I also fell. Does it us? Yeah. Is du a zach, a tzadik, who's vetnish, who's gigan, the whole thing is connected to the whole thing? The hardy gravis was vetnish connected to the whole thing. Is 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 the for the door. This is an individual his kashlus for the rabbit a chassid. the cup filled, the cup felt filled the pain mervid under the chalakim. Is the Rebbe to fill the fill of every year? So Shal Sochov is some soifer. The way is like some soifer. So he says, why are you allowed to go ask a Rebbe for a bracha? Or ask him to daven for you? The whole machloek is about malachi rachem, and if you ask malachim, daven directly. So he says, you're going to a Rebbe, you're not going to somebody else. You're going to your own head. <laughs> He says, you're allowed to ask your head to dive into you? He says, forget, your head is the one. He says, the head feels the pain more than the finger. The head feels the pain. That's what the Chesam Seifer writes. If you're going to a dead person, you take a right. When you're going to, if you're going to a dead person, you're right. When you're going to a, the oil of a tzaddik, you're not going to a dead person. The Gemara says in Brachas, tzaddikim af bechay af bechay af bechay af Sagamar and Brachas, Tafyud Zayan. Sadikim Avbim is Sasan Kurim Chayim. Gemara says in Tainis Dafhe, Yaakov Avinu Loy Mace, Mazar Bachayim Afubachayim. Gemara says in Saita Dafyud Gimel, 
Moshe Loi Meis. So however you touch these Gemaras, the point is that there's a life that continues even if it's not physical. And the truth is every Neshama, every Neshama is alive. Every Neshama, yeah. It says that Kalev went to Mar Samach to Davin. This is, the the, the, the Pais can talk about Derish and all the halachas about it. But you see, Lepoil and halacha that you're allowed to go to a cave and for care. It's brought even in Shulchan Aruch, Benigaya Elul, you know, or before Rosh Hashanah. Shtatchos, yeah. There were people who didn't go. It's true. There were, there were Jews. The Vilna gone, yeah. There were Jews who didn't go to, uh, to Beis Achaim, yeah. They didn't hold from it. Huh? I know, I know. Well, the coin, the worst shit, the worst shit is not to go to Pesach Hayim. But Lepoel Mamash, there's Nimnu uh, Vigamru, most shit is that you could go, and you go. Kuntus HaShtatchus, from the middle of Rebbe, yeah, he wrote, he wrote about the Alter Rebbe. It's Kuntus HaShtatchus, a lot of Arichas about it. The, the, the 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 At the Rebbe's oil, they have a mechitza of ten tefachim, so koyanim can go. And the door, there's like one door, and then there's another door, and you Yeah, they made a system. The oil itself, you'll see around the cave where there's a mechitza of ten tefachim. But also now they made that the path towards it should also have a mechitza. Through the Beis Hachayim, yeah. That was built a few years ago. So Rabbi, why are you here in this part of the Basin? Can you explain to Neshama mostly to be, to be uh, so when, we, when you say like going to Alamos to, to Neshama, we're referring to, to Atsilu. We'll see the next year. The next year is going to be about that. Which Neshamas are we talking about? No problem. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.